I'm so glad you noticed the fuchsias. They've come out well, haven't they? Must be all the rain and sunshine we've had in April. Linda loves it when people notice her garden. You'll be invited again. Well, it's nice, isn't it, when people notice? Would you like some more coffee? Clive, get some more coffees. Yes, my lady. Sweetheart. Does what he's told, bless him. Anyway, I'll tell you what you really want to know now. Sod the bloody garden. I'll tell you about the murders. Nothing like saying it like it is, Linda. Shush, Clive, and get the coffees. We could hardly believe it. I'd gone to lunch with the girls, and when I came back, there they all were. All those police cars next door. They'd cordoned the building off, just like they do in Midwinter's murders. Midsummer murders, Linda. <sighs> Ark at him over there, telly addict. Anyway, they'd taken him away by then. I went over to try and find out what was going on. They were a bit cagey at first. To be honest with you, the policeman looked like he was about 12. But then, I suppose they do nowadays, don't they? Then they brought a body out, on a stretcher, covered in a white sheet. But I could tell it was a male's body. And then Celia came over from across the road and she said it was the third one that they brought out from the house. Oh, shocking. Truly shocking. More coffee? Mm. Don't plunge it yet. Let it settle. It allows the coffee to infuse. Men. Useless, aren't they? Anyway. I'm sorry, I haven't asked you about your holiday or Gavin's engagement, but we'll get to that. Bet you'll be wanting to know all the gory details. You've probably read about it all on the news already, Linda. Yes, but we have the inside information, don't we? We lived next door to him for three years. I know it's easy to say now, but to be honest with you, I thought he was a bit weird from the first moment I met him. He didn't seem especially interested in getting to know me at all, even when I told him about the best builders in the town and the local coffee shop. He introduced himself as a solicitor, sure enough, but, well, to be honest with yous, he was never home at the weekend, so I could tell because it was always dark and there wasn't a peep out of him. He was very quiet. He kept himself to himself. Yes, but he did have the odd visitor, mostly male, mostly young. I didn't mind, did I, Clive, living next door to a potential gay? Well, it's about time the neighbourhood got a bit more diverse. It's been an age since the Changs moved to Bristol. I know it sounds like a cliché, but it was obvious he was gay. He was well-dressed, very smart, well-groomed. I um, guess what I'm trying to say is he just didn't seem like a serial killer. Well, I don't know what she thinks a serial killer should look like. Look, dear, can we just talk about something else and stop going on? This has all been rather upsetting, despite how she comes across. Well, I knew he was gay. No wife, no children, well-groomed. We don't have any children. You can't judge people's sexuality by whether or not they've got children. Not in this day and age, Linda. Yes, but I knew you were a red-blooded male from the first moment I met you. How? You ordered steak at the restaurant and those big dark hairy arms. Makes me feel giddy like a 20 year old again just thinking about our first date. <laughs> Giddiness soon passed. Well, you get older, don't you? I don't mean to be crude, but well, sex features less and less in a relationship, doesn't it? Well, you become each other's other half, you know, each other's companion. There's more important things than sex in a relationship after 20 years of marriage. Anyway, he's been arrested now, so there's no need for a crime rock reconstruction. They've got him. Yes, but they were young, weren't they? Early 20s. Some of them not even out yet to their parents. Vulnerable, like children. Oh. I can't even get into the mentality of how killing someone can bring sexual pleasure. <sighs> Our guest room overlooked his garden. They're digging it up scrap by scrap. There may be more bodies. <sighs> God rest their souls. Is 
wasn't seedy or anything, or dirty, was it? No. Clive went round there a couple of times, helped tinker with the cars. Oh, it was the only thing we had in common. I only saw the garage and the kitchen for a cup of tea. It wasn't like I was snooping around in the bedroom cupboards or anything. Yes, but he took to you right away, didn't he? Looked you right in the eye, practically blanking me. I'd have thought he was eyeing you up, but now we know he liked them young and dead. Are you sure there wasn't anything weird in his garage, like pornography or clothes with blood potentially on it? He was just an ordinary guy. I've told you this before. I was barely in the house. Just helped him with some tyre fitting and had a cup of tea. I've told you all this before. I should be going. He's got an appointment with the investigating officer. Oh, it's just routine questions, that's all. What time do you think you'll be back for tea? I'm not sure. I was only asking. I don't know, but I hope it won't be long. Perhaps put a portion of something aside in case I'm not back. Anyway, I best be off. It's been nice seeing you again. I hope it goes well with your engagement party. Bye, love. They'll ask how he knew him, what he was like. They'll ask why he was the only one in the neighbourhood that went round there. Because he kept himself to himself, always himself to himself. Except for when Clive was round there, helping him with his car. Anyhow. Lanzarotti. I hear it's just lovely in September.